Good morning, everyone. Two, one, two. One, two, one, there it is, all right. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to worship with us here at Plymouth Park United Methodist Church. Uh, for those of you who are with us in here, those who have joined us online, and I know many of our church family are probably busy at work preparing for our garage sale, which will happen in just a few days. So thank you if you have brought some stuff for the garage sale. Thank you if you've been helping work and prepare rooms and to welcome folks. And we hope that you'll participate in that. We also hope you'll let a neighbor know we have those yard signs. You'll see them out in our narthex here or down in the ministry center lobby, whichever way you are leaving or coming and going today. Uh, but we hope you'll let the community know that it's going on. Um, we also have our preview dinner Thursday. If you haven't yet, you can go down to the table in our ministry center or you can contact the church office and reserve your tickets for Thursday night's uh, preview dinner and get those first dibs for you to take home some of my stuff. Thank you. Um, but really, it will be a great time, a little bit of that blessed chaos of welcoming the neighborhood over the next few days. And for those of you who've been giving lots of time, it will all be over in just a few days. Um, but we appreciate your generosity, whether you've been bringing stuff, helping. The funds from our garage sale help support the ministries of our church. So thank you all for this different way of practicing some generosity and hospitality in our community. In addition to all the fun of the garage sale, Next Sunday afternoon at 6 p.m. in our fellowship hall, we're actually also going to have a family movie night. So if you have had all the fun you can have at the garage sale and you haven't had enough fun at church yet, come back and let's have our family movie night. And uh, whether that's you or some family you know who would like to have some air-conditioned Sunday night fun, uh, talk to Jack or Krista about the family movie night in the fellowship hall on uh, next Sunday. And then following that, that uh, first week of August, Thursday through Sunday, or Thursday through Saturday, will be our Jedi Faith Alliance. It's the second year that we're offering this special sort of mini camp with our kids, tying in the fun of Star Wars with faith formation. And Krista Bailey has written this great uh, plan and curriculum to talk about the fun of this sci-fi adventure, but really to root it in the biblical story and how we grow in our faith. So that'll be wonderful Thursday through Saturday with Jedi Faith Alliance. But wait, there's more. So that next Sunday, a week from, uh, two weeks from now, we will have our splish, splash, bash uh, to save for the world of summer and to welcome in the new school year. We're hoping our kids who've been with us at VVS and our summer camps and Jedi Faith Alliance, our youth who've been doing so much in our neighborhood will come and have fun at water slides and food. And I hear there are water balloons. Last year, I did a dunk tank and a shirt and tie. We'll see what I can embarrass myself with this year, but it will be a great time. Uh, whether you have kids or a family who want to participate in that fun, uh, uh, it's also just great to have that welcoming presence to our neighborhood that says we care about you. We love you, and our church is here with you. So consider being a helper or an ambassador of God's grace at our Splish Splash Bash in a couple of weeks. Say that three times fast. Um, well, there's so much going on, friends. It is a joy to share ministry with you. Thanks for your generosity and faithfulness that makes it possible for us to do such great ministry together through garage sale, our kids and youth stuff, the fun of summer. Um, let's greet each other in that joy and peace of the joy we share today. Let's greet one another.
check, check. Friends, I'm going to invite us to find our places for worship today, whether you're here in our pews or if you've joined us online. And one other announcement I will mention, we talked about this the last couple of weeks, but we will plan for the first two Sundays in August, two Sundays only, we will have one church service in our sanctuary at 1045. So August 7th and 14th, we'll have Holy Communion, we'll have wonderful music, and we will have questions from you in Instead of a sermon from me, and you can watch me tap dance around up here uh, addressing your questions, but your questions of faith, your questions about the denomination, your questions that maybe you carry in your heart, or maybe you just want to stump the pastors and you want to see how well we do. I will say in advance, if the questions are not within the sandbox of faith, I cannot help you with your taxes. I cannot help you with other concerns. So, um, but in my... Uh, limited area of expertise, and I use the word expertise lightly, um, where I want to be in conversation as a church family. And I hope, and I believe, it will be wonderful for all three of our services to be together for a couple of Sundays, to see one another, be at the Lord's table together, and share in holy conversation and worship together. Won't that be good? I'm so excited for that. So that'll be 1045, those first two Sundays in August. You know, we're even going to bless backpacks that second Sunday. So it'll be fun to send our kids off to school, all as a church family as well. Well, uh, that's truly, finally, the end of our announcements today. Uh, we are joined again by our guest on keyboards, Jacob Royal, and he is going to lead us in our... Yeah, absolutely. Let's welcome Jacob today. He is going to lead us in our time uh, for worship today. Would you please stand as you are able and join me in the call to worship, which you can find on the screens or in your bulletin. As we gather today, we call on you, our Father who art in heaven. As we gather today, we lift up who you are and what you represent. Hallowed be your name. As we gather today, we seek your ways, not our own. Your kingdom come, your will be done. As we gather today, we say sorry to you and one another. Forgive us as we forgive. As we gather today, we need you. Give us this day our daily bread. Lead us away from temptation. Deliver us from evil. As we gather today, we pray. Amen. Would you please remain standing and join us in uh, opening hymn number 405, Seek Ye First.
His righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ask and it shall be given unto you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. As we go to our time of prayer today, I invite you to turn in your bulletin or in your all-church email, if you're worshiping with us at home, to our list of ongoing prayer concerns. You'll see this week that we are holding in prayer of sympathy for Jan Jones and family on the death of her aunt, Doris Gates, and for Pat Naylor and family on the death of his cousin, Perla Skelton-Smith. We also pray prayers of health and healing for Robin Higginbotham. And we have our ongoing prayer concerns, those in our church family who have been entrusted to our care, who are connected to us either by love, well, always by love, <laughs> but either by blood or by friendship. We know that God has given us the gift of community. So we care for that community in our prayers. I also know God has been moving in your life and present to you, whether you have experienced great joy and celebration or whether there has been great heartache and pain, and everything in between, we know that God is in it and through it and with us. So we say this prayer together, and we ask God that, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. I want to give you a moment of silence before we pray. Continue to pray through the Psalms as we have this summer, this week praying through Psalm 116. But before we pray as a community, I just want to give you a moment to be in God's presence, however you need to be, knowing that you are enough and that you are loved here and now. Let us go before the Lord. Tender Lord, we love you because you hear our requests for mercy. We'll call out to you as long as we live because you listen closely to us. Death's ropes bound us. The distress of the grave found us. We come face to face with trouble and grief. So we called on your name, Lord, please save us. You are merciful and righteous. Our God is compassionate. You protect simple folk. You save us whenever we are knocked down. You remind each other that we can be at peace again because the Lord has been good to us. You, God, have delivered us from death, our eyes from tears and our feet from stumbling. So we will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. We have remained faithful even when we've said, I'm suffering so badly. Even when we've said out of fear, everyone is a liar. What can we give back to you for all the good things you've done? We'll lift up the cup of salvation. We'll call on the Lord's name. We'll keep the promises we made to God in the presence of all God's people. The death of the Lord's children is a costly loss. Yes, O oh God, we are definitely your servants. You have freed us from our chains, so we'll offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving to you. We'll keep our promises we made in our baptism. Christ Jesus, we ask you to tend the sick, bless the dying, 
soothe the suffering, pity the afflicted, and shield the joyous. Remind us each day that our common life depends on one another, so it doesn't have to happen to us for it to matter to you. Holy Spirit, come. As we pray with the confidence of your children the words that you taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Kid friends that want to come up, any of my kid friends, come on come up down. Here and meet Jack and I. You guys can have a seat right here. All right, good to see everybody. You guys have a seat right out here. What's up, guys? Little crisscross applesauce right here. Come out here, somebody. We're gonna, we're, we're gonna sit Perfect. on this side today, right. Jack. So we're gonna, we're gonna look sit over right there. Here. How's it going, everyone? <laughs> Hi. Good. What's up? I like it. Hey, Jack. Hey, Krista. How's it going? Good. How about you? Good. So here we are at summer. We are. We're still talking yeah. about movies. We're talking about movies, and we're talking about how they relate to our faith and That's how right. they relate to the Bible and to God. So let's see if you guys can guess what we're talking about today. Okay. Okay, you ready? Are you guys ready? Okay. So there's a girl named Riley. Okay, girl named Riley. There's these really cool globes that are all different colors. Okay. They roll around, and there's these different colored, like, emotional beings oh emotional beings you oh, think you know you, think you know it? what is it what is it yeah yeah <laughs> oh you've seen, seen it, it? Yeah. okay good so what is it inside, inside out. out you knew it you knew I it all along. Right. Right. Yeah. Riley, Riley has so many emotions. She can't control it. Right. When, she was, when, she was, when joy and sadness was gone, yeah. the three would have to be happy. Yeah. That's and right. Tried and tried. Right, because you know what? The thing is, emotions are kind of like a compass. Right. Yes, you, you have to have your own emotions. That's right. The other emotions are like your bones. Right. That's right. You have to have your own emotions. Right. You have to be there and sad. You have to be there and happy. You have to be there and sad. You have to be there and happy. You have to be there and sad. You have to be there and happy. You have to be there and sad. You have to be there and happy. You have to be there and sad. You have to be there and happy. You have to be there and sad. You have to be there and happy. You have to be there and sad. You have to be there and happy. You have to be there and sad. You have to be there and happy. You have to be there and sad. You have to be there and happy. You have to be there and sad. You have to be there and happy. You have to be there and sad. You have to be there and happy. You have to be there and sad. You have to be there and happy. You have to be there and sad. You have to be there and happy. You have to be there and sad. You have to be there and happy. You have to be there and sad. You have to be there and happy. You have to be there and sad. You have to be there and happy. You have to be there and sad. You have to be there and happy. You have to be there and sad. You have to be there and happy. You have to be there and sad. You have to be there and happy. You have to be there and sad. You have to be there and happy. You have to be there and sad. You have to be there and happy. You have to be there and sad. You have to be there and happy. You have to be there and sad. You have to be there and happy. You have to be there and sad. You have to be there and happy. You have to be there and sad. You have to be there and happy. You have to be there and sad. You have to be there and happy. You have to be there and sad. You have to be there and happy. You have to be there and sad. You have to be there and happy. You have to be there and sad. You have to be there and happy. You have to be there and sad. You have to be there and happy. You have to be there and sad. You have to be there and happy. You have to be there and sad. You have to be there and happy. You have to be there and sad. You have to be there and happy. You have to be there and sad. You have to be there and happy. You have to be there and sad. You have to be there and happy. You have to be there and sad. You have to be there and happy. You have to be there and sad. You have to be there and happy. You have to be there and sad. You have to be there and happy. You have to be there and sad. You have to be there and happy. You have to be there and sad. You have to be there and happy. You have to be there and sad. You have to be there and happy. You have to be there and sad. You have to be there and happy. You have to be there and sad. You have to be there and happy. You have to be there and sad. You have to be there and happy. You have to be there and sad. You have to be there and happy. You have to be there and sad. You have to be there and happy. You have to be there and sad. You have to be there and happy. You have to be there and sad. You have to be there and happy. You have to be there and sad. You have to be there and happy. You have to be there and sad. You have to be there and happy. You have to be there and sad. You have to be there and happy. You have to be there and sad. You have to be there and happy. You have to be there and sad. You have to be there and happy. You have to be there and sad. You have to be there and happy. You have to be there and sad. You have to be there and happy. You have to be there and sad. You have to be there and happy. You have to be there and sad. You have to be there and happy. You have to be there and sad. You have to be there and happy. You have to be there and sad. You have to be there and happy. You have to be there and sad. You have to be there and happy. You have to be there and sad. You have to be there and happy. You have to be there and sad. You have to be there and happy. You have to be there and sad. You have to be there and happy. You have to be there and sad. You have to be there and happy. You have to be there and sad. You have to be there and happy. You have to be there and sad. You have to be there and happy. You have to be there and sad. You have to be there and happy. You have to be there and sad. You have to be there and happy. You have to be there and sad. You have to be there and happy. You have to be there and sad. You have to be there and happy. You have to be there and sad. You have to be there and happy. You have to be there and sad. You have to be there and happy. You have to be there and sad. You have to be there and happy. You have to be there and sad. You have to be there and happy. You have to be there and sad. You have to be there and happy. You have to be there and sad. You have to be there and happy. You have to be there and sad. You have to be there and happy. You have to be there and sad. You have to be there and happy. You have to be there and sad. You have to be there and happy. You have to be there and sad. You have to be there and happy. You have to be there and sad. You have to be there and happy. You have to be there and sad. You have to be there and happy. You have to be there and sad. You have to be there and happy. You have to be there and sad. You have to be there and happy. You have to be there and sad. You have to be there and happy. You have to be there and sad. You have to be there and happy. You have to be there and sad. You have to be there and happy. You have to be there and sad. You have to be there and happy. You have to be there and sad. You have to be there and happy. You have to be there and sad. You have to be there and happy. You have to be there and sad. You have to be there and happy. You have to be there and sad. You have to be there and happy. You have to be there and sad. You have to be there and happy. You have to be there and sad. You have to be there and happy. You have to be there and sad. You have to be there and happy. You have to be there and sad. You have to be there and happy. You have to be there and sad. You have to be there and happy. You have to be there and sad. You have to be there and happy. You have to be there and sad. You have to be there and happy. You have to be there and sad. You have to be there and happy. You have to be there and sad. You have to be there and happy. You have to be there and sad. You have to be there and happy. You have to be there and sad. You have to be there and happy. You have to be there and sad. You have to be there and happy. You have to be there and sad. You have to be there and happy. You have to be there and sad. You have to be there and happy. You have to be there and sad. You have to be there and happy. You have to be there and sad. You have to be there and happy. You have to be there and sad. You have to be there
it's like a compass. You kind of have to go through all those emotions to get to where you're going, That's right? right. What's that? What? When they come together and they both put their hands Like what's fixing to happen right now? Yeah. See? And there it is. And Jack, what's the amazing thing about God in all of this? The amazing thing about God is God is with us as we grow, as we grow with our bodies, our emotions, and every and part. In our minds. Yes, and as we grow in our minds. And so, so when family was like the, so when, when both of them put their hands on the button, uh -huh. they all came to they came together and made a new emotion. That's, That's right. right. Sad and happy. And they so brought this. That's right. Exactly. And it brought her together with her parents. That's right. And it showed that our parents need to have emotions too. And they feel, right? We all feel. So we need to feel what we need to feel. And it's okay to feel. And God is with us in everything, right, Jack? That's right. Everything. Should we say a prayer about it? Yeah. What's prayer so much? That's right. So let's do a, let's do a prayer sandwich. And all the big kids out there will lead by example and let's pray. Oh, God, we thank you for today and for all of the love that you have shown us. God, help us to remember that you are with us at all times. Help us remember that always. Amen. Amen. Let's go have a seat. There is sappy, sad, and happy. Oh, that's good. I like it. Go, go, go. Lord, make me an instrument of thy peace. Where there is hatred, let me so love. Where there is injury, thy pardon, Lord. Doubt. Let there be faith. Oh, Lord, make me an instrument of thy peace. Well, there's despair. Let me. Where there is darkness, let there be light. Where there is sadness, let there be joy. O Divine Master, Grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand. To be loved as to love. Oh, Lord, make me an instrument of thy peace. Where this is hatred, let me so For it is in giving we receive, 
and it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. instrument of thy peace. Thank you, Jacob Valdez, for that gift and leading us. Thank you, Jacob Royal. We're also blessed to have Jake Fierro here. So it's uh, Jake and the Jacobs, or um, well, we're truly blessed by our friends uh, leading us today. Thank you all, and we're glad to welcome back Reverend, uh, not, not Reverend, sorry, but Dr. Michael Lindstrom. Uh, Dr. Michael Lindstrom is back from some time with his family in Sweden, and we are glad to have you back stateside, but grateful that you had the time with your family in your homeland as well. So... Um, wasn't the energy of our kids just phenomenal? It was great. I, I wish we could uh, bottle up that energy and uh, make give it to the rest of us. I could use some of that. My caffeine's wearing off this morning. Um, but the joy of our kids here, talking about Inside Out, we had a wonderful Mission Week this week. Jack's wearing the Mission Week t-shirt. of uh, well, Our kids were all over Irving. They were baking uh, baked goods for first responders and other community servants. They were at Irving Cares and the Irving Schools Foundation. They even trespassed into some of our hallowed Sunday school classes and did some sorting and maybe messing up of some things for the garage sale, but we, uh, we had a great week, and we're really blessed by the team that we have here. Krista, Jack, thank you both so much for how you invest in our kids. Uh, I know Jedi Faith Alliance is going to be another great thing, and the Splish Splash Bash is going to be phenomenal. Uh, just see your generosity at work, friends. When you see the excitement of our kids up here, when you see the goodness of them engaged in the community, that is your generosity at work. So uh, join me in giving God thanks for Kristen, Jack, and all that for the summer that's been. Uh, our staff is just incredible. You know, Reverend Audrey Altramavez uh, does so much to help us keep connected in the community and help our media stuff run every week. And our media team's back there with Tom Rubeck behind the camera. Mark Turpening is riding herd with some of our youth back there as well. Um, but we are truly, truly blessed, friends. We're truly, truly blessed. And I'm blessed by you. Do you know that? I am truly blessed by you. It is a joy to see the image of God staring right back at me every Sunday morning whenever we're gathered for worship. And it is a joy day in, day out whenever I get to be with you in prayer or be with you in study or to even do the work like meetings and such to share in the work of ministry with you. So thank you for being the church. Let's turn our attention to scripture today, friends. Maybe you've heard a theme about prayer today. We had our anthem about the prayer of St. Francis, our call to worship sort of integrated what we call the Lord's Prayer in our tradition. We had the words, seek ye first in our first hymn. That is the theme of our scripture today, when Jesus is asked to teach his disciples how to pray. And so we hear from Luke 11. May our hearts, minds, and lives be open to the word of God for us in scripture today. Jesus was praying in a certain place. When he finished, one of his disciples said, Lord, teach us to pray just as John taught his disciples. Jesus told them, When you pray, say, Father, uphold the holiness of your name. Bring in your kingdom. Give us the bread we need for today. Forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone who has wronged us. And don't lead us into temptation. He also said to them, Imagine that one of you has a friend and you go to that friend in the middle of the night. Imagine saying, Friend, loan me three loaves of bread because a friend of mine on a journey has arrived and I have nothing to set before him. Imagine further, 
that he answers from within the house, Don't bother me. The door is already locked and my children and I are in bed. I can't get up to give you anything. I assure you, even if he wouldn't get up and help because of his friendship, he will get up and give his friend whatever he needs because of his friend's brashness. And I tell you, ask and you will receive. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open to you. Everyone who asks receives. Whoever seeks finds. To everyone who knocks, the door is opened. Which father among you would give a snake to your child if the child asked for a fish? If a child asked for an egg, what father would give the child a scorpion? If you who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Friends, will you pray with me? God of love and God of grace, this is your time and we are your people. Open our hearts, our minds, and our lives to your presence that we would receive your word and respond with all that we are. Amen. Yes, friends, our sermon title today is a bit of tongue-in-cheek from the prophet Bon Jovi. Um, for those of you too young to know Bon Jovi, I just don't have time to explain hair metal this morning. And for those of you who maybe had passed the demographic on the rock and roll dial before Bon Jovi came along, I envy you. But I have a controversial opinion about that song, but that's okay. Well, we're not here for me to work out my issues with Bon Jovi today. But... This title came to me in reading this scripture for our conversation this morning because the honest truth is, friends, the, the sum total of my life, truly the foundation of it all is living on prayer. And this is the way Jesus taught us. We pray these words every week when we gather because Jesus said, this is the way you pray. And yeah, we make some additions and adaptations over time, but the core of what we call the Lord's Prayer is how Jesus instructed us. And friends, without prayer, I don't know what we've got. When we talk about prayer, when we teach it to our children, we say simple things, but that doesn't make it less true. What is prayer? It's talking to God. Staying connected with God. Not just my faith, but my entire being, my entire life is lacking and worse off when I am not talking with God, when I'm not connected with God. I know you know this. I know you know this. Sometimes I need the reminder in my own life and faith. I'm imagining I'm not alone in those times. One of the hallmarks of our church family that I love so much are these long-time enduring friendships and family relationships that make up Plymouth Park United Methodist Church. Anytime I ask someone, almost every time I ask someone how they got connected here, either they were invited by a friend or they showed up and they met a group who became close friends and like family to them. And I hear these long-time stories of people, some who've known each other maybe since you were teenagers and are still friends, some who you are family, and then kids of other families got married, and now we have a whole web of people. Sometimes uh, I'll talk to other colleagues of mine. They're like, how do you keep folks who aren't related from each other to being on committees? I'm like, man, at Plymouth Park United Methodist Church, I'm not sure that's entirely possible. But the friendships and family relationships of this place, the church family that we are, is a hallmark of being connected by God's love. And what makes relationships work is the investment and connection we keep up with each other. In my own life, my closest, dearest friends are the ones that aren't only the folks who text me or call me and say, Marcus, how's it going? Let's make plans. It's also the people I reach out to. How are you doing lately? How can I be there for you? I'd like to see you and make time for that. Again, we know this, but 
our relationship with God is like so many of these other meaningful relationships that help us feel belonging, that help us know love, that help us have a place to be and be known. I know that God greets us every moment of every day with all the love we could ever want and more. And the invitation in prayer and connection with God is to invest in that relationship as if I would my closest friends and family, my dearest ones. That connection is, for me, the source of faith that keeps it going. And I think it's a good question to ask as the disciples come asking Jesus, how do we do this? Probably some of it is they're seeing Jesus and saying, he's got something figured out. (laughs) Of course, he's the son of God, so he has a, a different kind of being in that. But he's also fully human, yes? They're following this person. They're being taught by him. They're saying, hey, these other teachers are teaching their disciples how to pray. How do you talk with, commune with, stay connected with our God? And Jesus offers these words that we know so well. I appreciate how Anne Lamott, a wonderful author about spirituality, talks about prayer in this connection. And I think she boils down the heart of Jesus' teaching about this pretty well. Anne Lamott says there are really essentially only three prayers that humanity ever prays. And they're pretty easy. And you've probably prayed them before. The first one, help! Help! We know that prayer deeply. The second, thanks. Man, on a good day, that's a pretty easy prayer for me to pray on a good day. On my worst days, that's I got to grow in that department, to be honest with you. And the third one, wow. Wow. Help, thanks, wow. Can you hear the overlay of those words in the words that we pray? Our Father who art in heaven, wow. Holy is your name. Hallowed be thy name. To say, God, you are holy other. Everything that makes me me, everything that makes the world what it is, our experience of being in reality begins in you. And I get to be part of that. And we get to help pretty quick there. (laughs) Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God, there are places in my heart, in my world that seem far from you. Help. Help my heart and my world look more like your love and your connection and your will. Give me what I need for today. the daily bread. And friends, we're invited to remember that story of God's people in those words. They were in the wilderness, in between, unresolved from enslavement to freedom, and they weren't there yet. But God every day was present. The pillar of smoke, the pillar of fire, and daily bread. Manna and quail. And just enough for that day. If they took more and hoarded more for themselves, it went bad like that. I struggle with that prayer sometimes because I want to pray, God, give me today my daily needs and my daily wants and my daily conveniences. Give me today the daily things that will make my life go as easy as possible. But in this prayer, I remember if I cried to have God's help and provision in every moment that really my very being is caught up in the work of God. I didn't wake myself up this morning, friends. Also, my three-year-old is out of town and her grandparents, so she didn't wake me up this morning either, thankfully. The createdness awoke, opened my eyes, The miracle of existence at the hand of our God 
has had this miracle happen that over the last 30-ish minutes, we've all been breathing in this same space. Some of us not even cognizant of it. It just happens, keeping our lives going. And the rhythms of our hearts have been going. I look to that in those moments and say, God, you've given me the bare essentials of what life is in this moment. The atoms and molecules that make my being. You have set that in motion for what I need to live today. Am I aware of that connection? And how my life is not my own. I remember in this prayer that I belong to something else. And friends, that we belong to each other. Because we also talk about the nature of forgiveness. Now, I love that first part all day long. I'll pray, God, forgive me all day long. In the economy of God's mercy, yes, whether I stepped out of line, broke the speed limit, said a cuss word, was rude or inconsiderate, God, forgive me, forgive me, forgive me, forgive me all day long. But Jesus doesn't let it stop there, unfortunately, for my ego. God, help me forgive others. That's a tall order for me, friends. One, I want to name clearly, there are moments of harm and pain that happen in our lives that forgiveness does not just mean saying, hey, it's all okay. It's all good. Sometimes forgiveness means restructuring the boundaries and relationships we have so harm does not happen. But also, I just like to carry a grudge sometimes. Can I be honest with you? And even when that grudge weighs me down, sometimes I've gotten used to the feeling and the fact that I would let go of that grudge, that bitter taste in my mouth, I don't know, I've gotten used to it. It's how I've made sense of my world. But to forgive others, it is to remember. I'm made in the image of God. You are made in the image of God. Who else is made in the image of God? Literally every other person, yes? Part of the scripture here says that God is going to give good, and we expect that. Not like a lottery ticket. Not like a genie who's granting wishes. But that God's nature is goodness and love for all of us. And in my connectedness with God, I am reminded that, friends, the goodness is not just for my own personal feeling good but that God even sends love and hope and redemption even for the people with whom I'm the most angry or am enemies with, most different from. Jesus talks about this stuff a lot, and yes, it is deeply inconvenient for me. Whether it is him saying, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, or him saying, hey, when you want to pick that speck of sawdust out of your neighbor's eye, tend to the big plank the big old log sticking out of your own first. It's meant to be a bit comical, but also meant to remind us the reckoning of grace starts here. Ultimately, I think the connectedness with God in this prayer is meant to say, God, change me to be more like you. That I would be forgiven and I would offer forgiveness like you. That when I'm living in this world, and people see me, they see you. I hope that's true of the prayers of our church, friends. I hope that's true of my own life and yours. God's power and might and glory that we say at the end there would be revealed in how loving and forgiving we might be. And yes, we pray to be not to be led into temptation. Now that's a quirky line, isn't it? Wait, is God leading me to temptation? Is God leading me toward evil? What's going on there? Punctuation is fun. I know many of you are educators in the room, yes? Our English punctuation system is nowhere to be found in the biblical text. What you see are groupings of Greek letters and Hebrew letters and scholars have to piece together the right order and everything. We hope we got it right. It seems to be pretty consistent over the millennia. 
But things like commas can be real fun. Sometimes I find myself in saying the Lord's Prayer. Sometimes I may not always be praying what I'm saying, if you're with me in that. It can feel sometimes like I'm an auctioneer at the communion table. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. And we're going to read five minutes late today, so I need to wrap this up. Amen. Come to the table. And so sometimes I can stumble over that line of lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. I was at a conference at a church up in Kansas City, Adam Hamilton's church. And they pray that prayer a little differently up there. He's written a whole book about it. You can go read his Lord's Prayer book. But because of this punctuation stuff, he puts the comma instead of at the end of the sentence. You, I know you wanted sentence diagrams in your sermons. I know you did. I know you did. But he moves the comma from lead us not into temptation, comma, but deliver us from evil to lead us, comma. So I'm sitting there ready to pray the Lord's Prayer like we always do. And I'm going, lead us not into temptation, but they said, lead us. I was like, wait a second, what is going on here? Did we change this just to make me look bad? What's happening? Because that's what we always love, to be a visitor in a church setting and not follow the standing up, sitting down. And thankfully, afterward, Adam Hamilton explained, no, 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 we paused in this different space. If you're a visitor, you may have noticed. Because based on what they believe in some newer scholarship that we're saying, lead us. And that our lives would choose how God is leading, not to where maybe my ego might choose fear or temptation or what might result in evil. God, your grace lead me. Your love lead me. God, don't let my own temptations or my own desires for revenge or anger or fear lead me so that I might ultimately be connected to your kingdom, your power, your glory forever. Friends, for me, this is the whole ballgame, being connected with God, being inspired by my life found in this connection with the God who loves me and made me, and seeing that we are all bound together in that love and that connection. We all belong to God. And friends, in that I belong to you, and you belong to me. Before I ever want to do anything in my life or in my faith, I want it to begin in that belonging, in that connection with the God who loves me and made me. For our church, I feel the same way. Before we do anything in ministry, as we gather in worship and go from this place to share the love of God, will it begin in the connection of the God who made us and fit us together? that then we would then go and share that good news and that love. Amen. Our ancestors of the faith have given us a sandbox to play in to understand who that God is that we pray to, who that God is that we are connected to. So I invite you to stand as you are able as we join together in professing this faith in the triune God. As we say together, we are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus, crucified and risen, our judge and our hope, in life, in death, in life beyond death. God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen.
seated. Uh, friends, as we prepare for our offering, I do want to offer a couple quick updates. You know, I accidentally on purpose mentioned our sign being 10 feet too tall for city code. I owe a big thank you to one of our members, Tom Trotter, who has graciously connected us to some folks in the city. And it looks like we're going to have some headway on our sign in the coming weeks. So thanks for uh, seeing that and your generosity and patience are at work in that. And also a big thanks to our trustees and folks like Carol Jones and Kathy Bonfelt in our office who have helped uh, get some repairs done around the buildings. We'll hope you'll see some new paint and eaves repairs and things and our parking lot work should begin in the beginning of August to begin seeing uh, resurfacing and uh, restriping of our parking lot. So Holly, did I get our dates and everything right on that? Wonderful. So uh, your generosity, friends, is at work in that all the time. And we hope that as our building has uh, renovations and updates and upgrades and things like that, you see how that sends a message of hope to our community as well. Let's pray for our offering now. Holy God, all that we have and all that we are begin in you. You have blessed us so much so that we will be a blessing in your world. As we return to you a portion of the resources you have blessed us with, may we trust you with our entire lives, trust you with all the ministries of our church, and trust you that you would be the one to lead us, not to the wills that we would make by our egos or temptations, but into the fullness of your love in all things. Amen. As we prepare to go from this time out to the rest of our lives and into the world, we will sing our closing hymn, number 557, Blessed Be the Ties That Bind. Oh, 
see you, I see the image of God and the connection we share that binds us, that tie of the Spirit. I pray that we feel that and can go from this place to see where God is moving in and through our lives. May we pray, help, thanks, wow, at the presence and the movement of our God. May we go forth to share that love and that hope that binds us. In the name of our God who creates us, Christ who makes us whole, and the Holy Spirit who sustains us and sanctifies us in the journey we share. Go in peace. Amen.